First question they asked me, do you think you may be pregnant? I said, no, no way. I'm actually quite surprised that at this point she didn't think maybe that that was a possibility. Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Mom and Dr. Jones, a board certified ob and mom to four, and it's time for everybody's favorite time of the month, much better than that other time of the month, where we go through an episode of TLC's famously entertaining I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant and ruin it with educational commentary. I love this episode. It's really, really good. So much learning, so much good information. Additionally, I worked all night last night and took only a short nap this morning and not even a full face of makeup can hide the bags under my eyes. So I'd appreciate it if you didn't comment on it because I'm here for you and I came for you and I had to get this done today and I wanted to get this done today and here we are. Thank you. Lasagna is diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS and at only 23, her dreams of having children are dashed. I was having very heavy periods one month that I don't see it for like nine months. The doctor delivers the news that having this condition will make it difficult for Lasagna to get pregnant. I remember crying. <laughs> I've always wanted to have a kid. Okay, first off, that is some terrible communication. If her doctor conveyed the information that she has PCOS and made her feel like she would never have babies because of that, that is horrible communication. Yes, it is true that some people who have PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I have a whole video about that I will link below if you wanna watch it, do sometimes have trouble getting pregnant because they ovulate less frequently most of the time. They aren't infertile completely. Most of these patients can get pregnant on their own or with minimal assistance from a doctor like myself. And some of them will go on to need help from a reproductive endocrinologist or fertility specialist, but most of them can have children. I am so appalled at how this diagnosis was conveyed to her. And also I'm disappointed with how they represented it in the show. Her dreams of having children were dashed. Come on, you don't know if she's gonna be able to have kids or not. This is crazy. Six years later, when Lasagna is 28, she finally meets and marries the man of her dreams. Still trying to calm down from that intro. It was just a very emotional moment. <laughs> yes, yes. Lasagna and Jason don't worry about birth control. I can't get pregnant, so why take birth control? If you have PCOS and you're watching this, you can get pregnant, and unless you are okay with that happening, please be on birth control. That doesn't mean it will be easy for you to get pregnant when you try, and it doesn't mean there's no people on the planet who have PCOS and could never conceive, but a lot of people with PCOS can get pregnant, so please, please, please hear that from this discussion. I'm sure you did from my absolute meltdown at the beginning. When she misses her period in June of 2008, she doesn't give it a second thought and attributes it to her PCOS. I always have problems with my periods where I see it one month and I don't see it again for a year. So super, super common to have very irregular periods. This makes complete sense that if she thought she was infertile and then she missed a period, that she would think it was just her PCOS because people who have PCOS do often go many, many months without having periods. That being said, if she's really going a year between periods, she needs to be seeing a doctor who will help her ovulate or at least have a cycle more frequently because that can become dangerous. The lining of the uterus can get overgrown and that can lead to serious problems like severe bleeding and even cancer in some cases. Going that long a year between periods if you're not on some kind of hormonal medication is not okay. Or if you were pregnant or menopausal or whatever, obviously that's okay too, but you need a good reason to go that long without periods and PCOS is not one of them. You should be having periods more often than that or we should be treating it to make sure you do. True or false, breastfeeding while you are pregnant could cause you to have contractions. The answer when we return. Breastfeeding while you are pregnant could cause you to have contractions. The answer, true. Breastfeeding triggers the release of the hormone oxytocin, which could cause contractions. That is technically true. However, that doesn't mean that it's unsafe to breastfeed during pregnancy. People ask me this all the time, and that is a long-held belief that is not based in science at all. You don't have to wean your younger baby just because you are pregnant. There's no evidence that breastfeeding during pregnancy increases the risk of preterm labor. Then in July, Lasagna becomes violently ill with what she believes is a case of food poisoning. I started feeling like I'm gonna throw up. It was just like my whole insides was coming out. HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, is what 
typically causes nausea and vomiting in the first trimester. That's your culprit. It's also what we use to diagnose people as pregnant with a pregnancy test. The vomiting passes, but is soon followed by fatigue and food cravings. And on Halloween, Jason notices other changes in his wife. I was putting on my costume. I weighed myself on a scale and I gained like 15 pounds. Hey, your neck. What is wrong with my neck? It's a little darker. I think it's because my hair is growing fast. You're still a beautiful pirate. <laughs> okay, well, a lot to unpack there. So first off, I say this in every episode. If you are missing periods, please take a pregnancy test. If you are in a sexual relationship with someone who can get you pregnant, even if you have something that makes you think you are unable to get pregnant, just take a pregnancy test to be sure. Although I always say that, I completely understand why she didn't because she was convinced she couldn't get pregnant and she was used to missing periods because of the PCOS. Now, he has said, your neck is a little darker. This is concerning for something called acanthosis nigricans. And this is something that happens when people have insulin resistance, which can come along with PCOS. And it signifies that maybe she has uncontrolled elevated blood glucose levels like you would have with diabetes. So this is really concerning because if she's pregnant and she has undiagnosed gestational or type two diabetes, we need to know about that. And there's a lot of fetal and maternal complications that can come from that. The couple blames all of her symptoms on stress, which only increases over the holidays when Lasagna loses her job. She would become moody. Why don't you buy me something I can't open? Even opening up presents wasn't even making me happy. In fact, it was making me madder because it was taking too long. I'm done. I don't care about Christmas. I don't care about nothing. I started having a lot of heartburn. I felt like bubbling in my stomach, like flutters. Okay, so she's got all the classic signs and symptoms of pregnancy at this point. She's had nausea and vomiting, fatigue, mood lability. Now she has fluttering in her stomach, food cravings, all the things we typically think about. And she mentioned GERD or heartburn. The reason people get heartburn in pregnancy is because certain hormone elevations that you have during pregnancy causes relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, which is basically the door that goes from the bottom of your esophagus to your stomach. And the job of that door is to open to let food go into the stomach and close to keep acid out of the stomach. But during pregnancy, because of hormonal changes, it's just a little bit looser, like its hinges have gone a little bit loose. And it lets acid back up into the esophagus more easily. So obviously you would have this happen more often when you have eaten a big meal because your stomach is full and that puts pressure on it. And when you lay down flat. So people will comment on having symptoms after eating and when laying down flat on their bed. So that is a classic sign of heartburn or reflux. And it's very common in pregnancy. By March, she adds frequent urination to her list of symptoms. As soon as I get through using a bathroom, it's like I'm not even up for five minutes and I'm going back again. Lasagna finally makes the decision to call her doctor. But on March 23rd, days before her appointment, she wakes up to a terrifying new symptom. I woke up, I just heard something go, Psh. What's wrong, babe? I peed on myself. First I thought I was dreaming. And then when I woke, the sheets was like flooded with water. She jumped up, oh, and she ran to the bathroom and things. And I was like, what was wrong? That's, she scared me. I'm sure that would be really scary if you have no idea what's going on. You don't know that she's pregnant. She doesn't know that you're pre she's pregnant. And then all of a sudden she jumps up in the middle of the night saying she peed herself. And now it looks like she's going to start having pain. So yeah, I'm sure that that is terrifying. I'm curious as to if at any point in this process she realized like maybe what was happening. I wasn't even five minutes. I had this most sharpest pain I ever felt before. Jason, someone is killing me. And I mean, it was scary. Someone is really killing me. All right, come on, let's go to the hospital. Oh, it's getting, oh. I've stopped this episode 50 times, so I know there's gonna be 100 comments about how I talk too much. And if that's the case, listen, you can go watch this episode in full on the Didn't Know I Was Pregnant YouTube channel. It's season two, episode four, and you can watch it there if you think I talk too much. That being said, I say this every episode as well, but oh my gosh, can you imagine? You must think you're dying. If you don't know what's going on and you have pain as severe as labor, all of a sudden, I mean, the only thing that must go through your head is that you're dying. That's all that can be, right? I mean, that's what I would think. Father William escorts her to the ER while Jason fills out the admitting paperwork. She was in pain, aching, excruciating pain. And the first question they asked me, do you think you may be pregnant? I said, no, no way. Okay. Oh. 
Okay, I'm actually quite surprised that at this point she didn't like think maybe that that was a possibility. Like with all of those symptoms and the fact that she wasn't having periods and her water just broke. But I guess if you've convinced yourself that you can't get pregnant, then that's a powerful thought process. The doctor felt my stomach and he was like, something's not right. The doctor performs a sonogram to identify the cause of her pain. I'm pregnant. Pregnant? Yeah. Do you hear that? So oh you're, you're in labor right now. You are nine centimeters dilated. What? It's all right. I can't right now, I need you to get her up in the right. I was like, oh my God, is he alive? And that's when I just lost it. That is so terrifying to go from, I think I'm dying to, oh my gosh, I am pregnant to the baby has a heartbeat and I'm in labor, like actual nine centimeter full blown labor and about to have to go through delivery process without having any preparation whatsoever. And then also to be worried about, is the baby okay? I sympathize so much. And I know there's a lot of criticism that comes with these episodes of people thinking like, this is just impossible. How do these people not know? But I think we have to move past that, past that not being able to quite understand where they're coming from and right into the space of, it must be terrifying. It doesn't really matter how they got to that point, although it's really interesting to watch and comment on, you know, they deserve to be heard when they say that it's terrifying because can you imagine how terrifying that that would be? The actors in this video never cease to amaze me. Get my husband. Jason is given the surprising news. What? That was like shock. Breathe through your nose. So much excruciating pain, my blood pressure was rising, heart rate was going real fast. I was scared too. Because it was just the most scariest moment. Here comes the head. One more push. Just hours after finding out she's pregnant with no pain medication, Lasagna vaginally delivers a baby boy. I was like, oh my God, is he alive? I had no prenatal care. What if my baby is deformed? I was so guilty. If something happened to my child, it's my fault. I say this every episode too, and I'm sorry if it's becoming repetitive, but I have to say it again. We do the best we can with the information that we have. And most of the time, pregnancy goes fine. Of course, that doesn't negate the necessity of pre a prenatal care. And I think that hopefully they're going to address the topic of acanthosis nigricans and whether she had gestational diabetes or not, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters because we would like to know and hindsight is 2020 though. You do the best you can with the information you have. And I think this is a really important lesson for all things in life. You cannot live feeling guilty because you made a decision that you would have made differently if you had more information. And is rushed away to be examined more thoroughly. I couldn't look at him at all. I just couldn't. They learn that the eight pound, two ounce boy they named Clarence is believed to be 39 weeks and is amazingly healthy. He's beautiful. That just gave me a sigh of relief right there. Sweetheart. Yes. Just hold my son, it was amazing. You got a family, babe. I never thought I'd even have a, my own son. <laughs> but how is it that Lasagna never realized that she was pregnant? Every single time I make these, somebody in the comments is like, oh my gosh, do you cry at deliveries? And I'm like, no, it is so much different watching a cinematic emotional experience than it is being in charge of keeping everybody safe. Like I have never cried at a delivery except maybe like a stillbirth and just cried with the parents afterwards or something like that. But I don't cry in deliveries, even though sometimes watching these makes me teary eyed. But like, you could tell how happy he was. He just was so happy to suddenly have a baby. And I don't know how I would feel if I didn't know I was pregnant and suddenly a baby came out of me. But also, can we talk about like the amazingness that she is? She just pushed out an eight pound, two ounce baby with no notice and no pain medicine. That is incredible. I am proud of her. That's amazing. I always knew you guys were gonna be parents. I knew it. I tried over and over again, a million and one times to conceive a child and it just didn't work. So I said, pregnancy is not even in a picture. It is just not possible. So I was in denial also. A baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just three months later, Jason, LaSonya, and their son are doing just fine and feel blessed to have the family they've always wanted. It was a scary, but it was a beautiful experience at the same time. And it was something that I will never, ever, ever forget. Ah, it's so cute. I love it.
love it. I'm shocked that they didn't talk about the acanthosis nigra cans. Like why the heck did they even comment on that if they weren't gonna talk about it? But that's what it is. It can represent insulin resistance or be a signal of diabetes in some cases. So there you go. Now you know. Thanks for being here today. I hope that you learned something. If you wanna watch another I didn't know I was pregnant, I will link over here or over there. I never get it right. One of these places, a playlist of other didn't know I was pregnant reactions so you can keep learning and being entertained. And I will see you next Monday.